Hey Bhaskar this side and today we are going to talk about how one can select appropriate syringe filter for sample preparation. I mean it is very common practice nowadays that the analysts are using syringe filter because of its conveniency and it turned around time. But the question is do we know how to choose the right filter paper for the sample preparation? It can be for assay, dissolution or related substances. So let us first understand, you know, how do you choose a syringe filter and look at the options given over here. Are you selecting the filter paper, filter paper which is available in the lab or you tend to select a filter paper which has worked well for the last analysis. And if you don't know the answer, don't worry, no, we are going to talk about the answers on the selection process of the syringe filter. So let us understand what is the correct way of choosing the syringe filter paper for your analytical need. So the selection of syringe filter paper can be based on to these four important characteristics. The first one is very important which is suitable pore size. So in case if you are preparing a sample for HPLC, you can think about the 0.45 micron pore filter paper. For UPLC or LCMS, you can think about 0.2 micron as a pore size. The filter paper must be having a membrane which is compatible with your sample or analyte. The filter paper must have the minimum or no analyte binding. And this is the point that we are going to discuss in detail in today's presentation. And the fourth one can be about the leachables and extractables out of the syringe filter paper or the membrane. So let us understand the physicochemical properties of the few of the very commonly used syringe filters. And share are they onto your screen. The first one is a PTFE syringe filters and this filter papers has the fluoroalkyl as the functional group. So I am also going to connect the functional groups onto the filter papers and how they are related with the analyte binding. When it comes to PVDF, it also has the fluoroalkyl functional groups when it comes to nylon now nylon is a polyamide membrane and this membrane contain three different functional groups you can see carboxylic acid functional groups you can also see amide functional groups and you will also see a amide functional groups the next membrane is the polyether sulfone and the polyether sulfone consists of the sulfone and the ether functional groups. The last one is the RC or the regenerated cellulose functional uh, cellulose membranes. And here it is. So the regenerated cellulose filters have the two different functional groups. One is the hydroxy functional groups, and then you will see the ether uh, functional groups present in between two cyclic rings. Now let us understand what is the compatibility of these filter papers and here it is on the screen. So if you look at the table on to the screen now you will find the compatibility studied for polar organic solvent then aqueous basis like three normal sodium hydroxide solution or ammonium hydroxide solution or sodium carbonate solution then there is acid which is one normal hydrochloric acid then the salt and the surfactant so when it comes to PTFE membrane filter paper you will find that it is the most compatible filter paper amongst the another the E stands for excellent I mean the PTFE is excellent in case of the polar organic solvent. It is also excellent in case of aqueous basic solutions 
acidic solutions and the salt solution it has a good fit in case of surfactant such as sodium dodyl sulfate or twin 20 when it comes to pvdf pvdf is a good for organic solvent like acn methanol but it is excellent filter paper in case of ethanol uh, in case if ethanol is present it is also a good fit not good fit but the excellent fit in case of aqueous uh, basic solutions acidic solutions and the salt solutions it is a good fit for the surfactant when it comes to nylon nylon is excellent filter paper in case of polar organic solvent like acn uh, it is a good fit in case of uh, solvent organic solvent like methanol and excellent fit in case of ethanol as an organic solvent but the nylon is not a good fit it is a poor fit for the aqueous basic solutions it is a good fit for acidic solutions it is excellent fit for salt solutions and again the good fit for the surfactant solutions the polyether sulfone is the good fit for acn and methanol organic solvent an excellent fit for ethanol organic solvent but it is a poor fit for the aqueous basic solvent solutions it is excellent fit for acidic solutions and the salt solution it is again good fit for surfactants last one is the regenerated cellulose is not a good fit for the acn it is good fit for methanol but it is poor fit for the ethanol it is again poor fit for you know sodium hydroxide solutions and ammonium hydroxide solutions but found to be good fit for this sodium carbonate solutions it is again a poor fit for acidic solutions but it is excellent fit for salt and surfactant containing solutions now based on to this table you will be able to understand probably what is the property of your uh, solute and based on to that you will be able to take a better decision in selecting the compatible syringe filter so as i said earlier that we will have a detailed discussion about the analyte binding see the analyte binding is nothing but how the analyte is preferring the surface of your syringe filter if your analyte is loving and liking the surface of syringe filter paper it is going to stay there itself but is it the is that the purpose of your filtration technique you actually want to not get your analyte absorbed or adsorb onto the surface of filter paper but it must get passed from the surface of the filter paper so the analyte binding is the number one reason for failure of the recoveries in case if you are analyzing dissolution and if you have a filtration as a your sample treatment before it goes for uv spectroscopic measurement or hplc measurement what is the important point that you must think of what is the kind of analyte binding this filter paper have as a part of this point we will talk about you know on which parameters the analyte binding actually depends what are the binding characteristics of this five different series filters that we talked and what is the way out that is the point number 3 let us talk about the analyte binding and on which parameters factors the analyte binding is dependent the first one is the membrane functional groups so we talked about the few of the membranes with the sulfonyl functional groups carboxylic acid functional groups amide or amine functional groups so you need to understand what is the possible interaction of my analyte with these functional groups and in case if there is a possibility of interaction with these functional groups the chance of analyte binding is higher so you should not think in the dark you know you need to understand 
what are the functional groups of the filter paper or the membrane and what are the functional groups available onto my analyte. So based on this information, you will be able to take a informed decision on to selecting the appropriate membrane filter. The filter surface area is another important point because more is the surface area available, the more can be analyte binding. So better you take a syringe filter paper with the minimum diameter or I think 25 mm diameter filter papers are very much popular. But in case if you have a sample quantity constraint, you can think of having the lower diameter syringe filter paper also. Binding sites. So the binding site again depends on to the number of functional groups available on to the uh, filter paper. For example, in case of nylon, now nylon contain three different functional groups where the binding can happen. The one is carboxylic acid, the second one is amide and third one is the amide. Again, the binding site also depends on to the surface area. So more is the surface area, more will be the binding sites available and hence your analyte binding can be further get enhanced. The nature of the drug substance, acidic, basic or the neutral. So this nature of the drug substance can also propagate, accelerate the binding of your drug substance onto the specific site of the syringe membrane filter. The pH of diluent is also important. Why? Because the pH of diluent can decide on to whether there is a possibility of the dipole-dipole interaction or the electrostatic interaction or can there be a formation of the hydrogen bonding. Whether your drug substance will be present into ionic state or into the non-ionic state. So the pH of diluent can also further reduce or enhance the binding. Now this one important factor shall be considered during the performing a dissolution into a multimedia. Now as a general practice, we perform the dissolution of a drug substance into a pH ranging from 1.2 to 6.8. So if you think about now for this particular pH, let us say for pH 6.8, my nylon filter is suitable. That doesn't mean that the nylon filter will be suitable at uh, pH 1.2 or in a dissolution medium of 0.1 normally SCL. The simple reason is, now what is the ionization state in pH 1.2? Is it the same as like in the pH of 6.8? If it is same, no worry. But if there is any change in the ionization state, you may find a different analyte binding in 0.1 normal SCL. I hope you understand what precautions you must take and you must not go with the thumb rule that yes in case uh, I am getting the good recoveries there is no analyte binding at PS 6.8 dissolution medium and it will not happen in 0.1 normal SL also. That should not be the case of consideration. Analyte concentration is again another important point. So lower analyte concentration requires a higher amount of filter saturation. In case of your analyte concentration is higher, then the analyte binding will be minimum. Now what are the binding characteristics of the five membrane filters and surety? So this particular table is going to help you. And this is again a general guidelines. So as I said, you need to think about the another impacting parameters while making the appropriate decision. But when it comes to the PTFE, where the functional group is the fluoroalkyl and the analyte binding generally gets happened because of the hydrophobic interaction and the hydrogen bonding. So in case if your drug substance is hydrophobic, non-polar in the nature, probably the PTFE can bind your analyte for longer time. Even though in case if there is a hydrogen bonding possible because your PTFE filter paper contain the fluorine atom, right? If you go and look over here, let me show you, right? The PTFE, it contains a fluorine and the fluorine is a highly electronegative atom. 
So fluorine has a capabilities to form a hydrogen bonding in case if your compound or analyte can form the hydrogen bonding. So in case if a molecule is hydrophobic or in case if a molecule can form the hydrogen bonding then probably the PTFE can also have a good amount of analyte binding possible. But on an average, on an average the PTFE has found with the lower analyte binding. The same is the case for PVDF. It also again contains the fluoroalkyl functional groups. The analyte binding happens because of the hydrophobic interaction and the hydrogen bonding. But as per as analyte binding is concerned, it is still very much low. When it comes to nylon, now there are three different functional groups present onto the nylon, amine, amide and carboxylic acid. So how the analyte binding can happen? with the electrostatic interaction and because of the hydrogen bonding and the nylon have the highest amount of analyte binding across these filter papers. The polyether sulfone has the two functional groups that is sulfone and ether and the mechanism behind analyte binding is electrostatic interaction and hydrogen bonding but it is having the medium score onto the analyte binding. Then the regenerated uh, cellulose has the two functional groups, hydroxy and ether. Its mechanism of you know, getting analyte bind is the hydrogen bonding and it also comes with the lower binding of the analyte. So particularly this table is going to help you out in understanding which membrane filter is suitable in your case. Now in case if you are struggling with the analyte binding, now what is the way forward? So, you can think of discarding more volume so that the filter paper, your syringe filter paper will get saturated. So, think of discarding 1 ml and then measure the analyte, then 2 ml and then measure the analyte, 3 ml and then measure the analyte and then understand how much volume is required, still I get the similar result and there is no increase in the result is found. For example, by discarding 1 ml of the solution, I found, let us say, 80% assay. By discarding 2 ml, I found 95% assay. By discarding 3 ml, I found 100% assay. By discarding 4 ml, the assay value is again 100. Now, this indicates that the filter paper has got saturated after 3 ml of the filtration. So I can say that the 3 or 4 ml should be the discarded volume for this filter paper so that the analyte binding will not be a reason for the lower assay values. Choose the filter paper with minimum analyte binding. So you study nylon, PVDF, PTFE, at least three filter papers. And amongst that, you understand which one is having the lower analyte binding. And that is the best way of choosing the filter paper. My advice is it is good to not select nylon filter paper as your preferred partner in the filtration system. In case if you are having the nylon filter as a part of your protocol which is already defined, it's okay. But in case if you are going to define the new protocol or method of analysis, try to avoid nylon as much as possible. So these are the important guidance that I, will, I wanted to you know, uh, give you so that you will not struggle in selecting the right syringe filter paper. So thank you very much for watching this video and I will meet you soon with such kind of very useful and informative videos. Till then, take care and bye-bye. See you soon.